Last night I didn't sleep too well. I don't think I slept much at all. I knew that today would be the day that I begin my journey to meet my birth parents. Hey David, it's Melissa. I really hope I hear from you really soon. Hey David! I can't wait to see you on Friday. I'm so excited and nervous at the same time. There's a lot going through my mind right now. How they're gonna react when I'm on the doorstep and how I'm gonna react when I see them after 19, almost 20 years of, of always wondering what, what it's gonna be like. I always did wonder why they put me up for adoption. I did wonder that since the beginning. I just kind of let it out of my mind because they didn't want to be different. I just wanted to fit in with the crowd. Definitely scared of them coming into my life and not fitting in to what kind of life I had. I grew up in Columbus, Indiana. I was a big tomboy when I was a little girl. I still have a lot of those traits now. So tattoos and the activities I like to do isn't your normal so soccer mom, I guess you could say. When I found out I was pregnant and I was, I think, 18, it just felt like a million bricks on top of me, like I couldn't breathe. I. Uh, I did not tell anyone about the pregnancy, not even my parents. I was very scared. I didn't know how other people would react, but the excitement part was there also because the thought of me being a mom. I think every woman likes that. At the time, I don't think either one of us is working, and uh, there's days that we may go a whole day without eating. Neither one of us was mature enough to take care of a child, and we made some mistakes, and we didn't want the child to pay for it. We uh, went up to the abortion clinic in Indianapolis. And on the way over, it was just quiet, a lot of thinking. Your mind's racing, basically. I remember all these protesters being lined up. They rush out to protect you from all the protesters. And they put a blanket over my head and a radio here and a radio here and tried to blast the sound away from all the protesters. But as I was walking in, throughout all the confusion and all the noise, I remember, I remember this lady saying, yeah, baby has 10 fingers and 10 toes and you're gonna kill it. And I remember I'm sitting in the waiting room. I get called back, just like any other doctor appointment. I had the gown on and they had me take a pill. I have no idea what it was. And there was this big silver tray and it had all of these tools. It almost looked like when you go to a dentist's office, the corners and the sharp edges. And I kept looking over in that cart. I remember the doctor. I would know his face to this day. I remember him walking in, washed his hands, put on a pair of gloves. He sat on a little silver chair. He sat down and scooted across the room. He had me put my legs up in the, in the, in the stirrups. And right as he went to, to touch me, I said, I can't do this. And I, I just, I 
immediately put everything down. The gown, everything, everything was goes down, and he just rolls his eyes and rips his gloves off, throws them in the trash can, and walks out the door and left me there. As I was leaving, they don't protect you when you leave. They protect you when you come in. So all those people, when I was walking out, they thought I, they thought I did it. Can we cut? When I was 23, I had my first child who the doctors came in and said, there's something wrong. He lived 12 days. I would get so frustrated with people who said, oh, I want a boy, I want a girl. All I wanted was a healthy baby. And got pregnant again very easily. My second son, John David, was born and he had the same genetic disorder. Everyone expected him to die within two weeks, and he lived two and a half years. So that was the loss of two sons that I had. While he was probably two, my first husband left. I lived with a lot of anger and a lot of disappointment. You know, when we first met, I could see that she had been through a lot, and I said, I'm going to... I'm going to make things different. And we started the adoption process pretty quickly. December 22nd, 1993. I just, I knew I had to go to the hospital. They actually induced him. When they tell you the baby has been born and you're just kind of in shock, like it's really happening. Almost um, forgot to call Susan, <laughs> you know, because there was so much going through my mind. Knowing the fact that I wasn't keeping him made it harder. Jimmy says, we have a boy. And I was a mother. And I said, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> he says, I'm sure, Susan, this is really it. It's really going to happen. When they put him in my arms, it was... I didn't want to let go. So we got in the car and headed to Indiana. We checked into the hotel tried to sleep for four hours, and we checked out. The same person that checked us in was still at the front desk. <laughs> he kind of gave us that look like, okay, you were here for four hours. And I said, if you only knew. <laughs> but they got there really quickly, so I didn't get any time with him. I was so torn. It's like part of me saying, just keep him, just keep him. It's not too late, it's not too late. And the other part of me says, you know, you have to let go. We walked into the hospital. Our hearts are pounding. And we met with the lawyer. And he took us um, to meet David. All I had on my mind was, what is he going to look like? They had a very nice little setup, a little private room for us that we could meet him. I could hold my son. The ultimate joy of holding your child that every mother experiences is mm -hmm. just. Well, first time, yeah. Happy tears were just flowing. We walk out the hospital with our new child in our arms on Christmas Eve, and it starts to snow. It was just the ultimate. It was like, he's ours.
I knew that I was doing the right thing for him. Not for me, but for him. It's kind of a bittersweet because I wanted him. Say hello to everybody. My life right now is <laughs> I'm at college and I just live a normal life. I like canoeing and a lot of outdoors activities. If I was never adopted to my parents and grandparents, <laughs> their lives would not be the same at all. Maybe they would have adopted another child, I don't know. But if they didn't have them in their life, I know their life would be boring. Make some raspberries for mom. <laughs> Cameron. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Is David helping you, Dad? Yeah, he's helping. He can help a lot better in here. <laughs> Someone asked David once, when did he find out he was adopted? And his response was, I always knew I was adopted. So he heard it from when he was in the crib. I think David was about eight years old when he started asking a lot of questions about his birth parents. and. I said, I have a picture. I'll show it to you. And he looked at the picture of them and he said, wow, they look like nice people. And he never asked any more questions. That, that's all he needed at that point in his life was to see the picture of them. David is not one to share a lot of feelings to know what's going on with him. I would frequently ask him, is this a problem? Is this an issue? And he never shared that it was. I don't want to do anything to possibly disappoint them because I realize what they sacrificed to have me. And so that's why I'm hesitant to, to, um, to be emotional with them. A year and a half ago, I contacted Kirsch and Kirsch, the adoption agency, to update my address, phone number, because it had been a while since I'd done that. And I thought, you know, he's going to be such and such age, and once he reaches a certain age, he can do, if he wants to reach me, he can. We get a phone call from Kirsch and Kirsch to say that Melissa's interested in an update. Are we interested? At that point, I freaked out. I got very emotional. I went outside. I had to catch my breath. It took me a long time to decide that I wanted to do this because we had to go through the law firm at first until the, the contact was mutual. And in my letter, I asked her, she was on Facebook, and I asked her to, to friend me. And he told me to go on Facebook and look at the video of him, and I by hit the ground. We've kept communication just strictly Facebook, and I've wanted more, but I didn't want to push it. It took a while for me to come in contact with Brian because there was some initial hesitation from Brian for me to be a part of his life. He realized that he would like to fill in that missing piece of the puzzle. He came home from work one day and I think I was cooking dinner and he immediately came right up to me and he started saying, I got something to tell you, it's very important. And then when he started crying, I knew it was serious. And he said that he has a son. I mean, I've been carrying this for 20 years. 
kind of wondered, you know, does he hate us uh, for giving him up? You know, that's how some people refer to it. Yeah, I think it's caused a lot of anger problems, uh, depression from time to time. I, I thought about meeting him, you know, what would I do? What would I say? I'm glad it's finally happened. And he's the one that got in contact with me. And we start, I started talking to him on Facebook too. At some point, I just realized that I'm in contact with both of them now, and I do want to meet them. I do want to see what, what life I might have been in. So we went ahead and decided that we were going to meet. It means a lot that everybody came tonight, and it's an exciting time in my life that I think we're all glad that it's happening. I guess I'm realizing now who, who the, the significant people are and who my, my best friends are and the best family are. And so I, I wrote, um, I have one, some of these for everybody here. When he gave us those letters, uh, that was a, a moment that touched me. He really can get his feelings down on yes. paper. Just, just his love. I just saw his love being poured out. You say, I'm not sure how either of you feels when you think about Melissa and Brian and how I'm not your birth son, and that bothers me sometimes. It doesn't bother me any. Like, it's irrelevant. And it's wonderful. I don't think I could love him any different if we were his birth parents. It's like we are. Oh, my God. I can't wait. I'm so excited. David always loved trains, so I just thought it was a wonderful thing that he was taking a train up to Indiana. We chose to drive instead because we wanted to reenact our trip 19 years earlier. My life story has always been different, but I don't want to live my life not ever knowing what might have been. I certainly understand why Melissa and Brian may have considered abortion. I understand that they were not in the position to take care of me. And the most important thing that I can do in my entire lifetime is thanking them for that decision. lack of sleep for sure. I didn't think I'd be this nervous, but but I definitely am. The nerves are kicking in. I've waited 19 years to see my son. I'm nervous, but I'm really excited. I want to see what he looks like in person, his voice, his smile, my hug I've been waiting for. It's 11.04, right? Keep, keep going, keep. Pull in, pull in the driveway, pull in the driveway. Everybody relax. Let me go first, let me go first. and Brian had me, they had another child named Courtney. She's my full-blood sister. Growing up an only child, to find out that I have siblings is incredibly overwhelming. Okay. 
<laughs> Wait, which one am I? I'm gonna... You're the blue one. Wait, okay, okay, wait, hold on one second. Wait. David, go easy on your sister. <laughs> Melissa and Brian divorced and they actually both remarried. And so I had met Sean, Melissa's new husband. After settling down at Melissa's house, I finally had the chance to talk to her face to face. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, guess I guess I just wanted to first thank you um, for your decision 19 years ago. I feel so bad. I feel so guilty. I figured he probably hated me when he knew that he was so close to being aborted. I figured he would never want anything to do with somebody like me because he probably thought I was some awful person. I, did, I never liked telling people that I was adopted. Are you mad at me? Never. Like, there are definitely times that, that I've thought, you know, I wonder if whether or not they're thinking about me. And, um, but that's, for the longest time, that was the only concern that I ever had. Because I had, you know, I have a great life that, that you allowed me to have. I knew that I was doing the right thing for him. Well, thank you. I've had a great life. I know you have. It's just overwhelming feeling, really. You know, how, how he's going to react, meeting us for the first time. Hey. What's up, Brian? See you, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Been a long time. I know, man. It's good to see you all. It's good to see you. Hey, Presley. How hey, you doing? David. How you doing? Good. Good. It was kind of awkward, you know, awkward situation. I was shocked about how much he looked like me. I noticed uh, we're similar in personality, kind of quiet, standoffish. But, you know, once you warm up somebody, he's the same way I am. He, he kind of comes out of a show. When I first found out that uh, David knew we'd gone to the abortion clinic, I just, you know, figured he does not like his period. His outlook's totally different than what I thought. And helps me move on. Now, I noticed things at work don't really get to me anymore. There's a lot of load lifted off my shoulders. He turned out good and healthy, and I'm glad he looked like me. When David left, I couldn't control Courtney hardly that night. I think Courtney was, was sad. You know, I was coming home, and she was staying home. And it's just a reality that that every adoption faces in my situation, and that's what we're facing. She'll hold it together right now, and as soon as you walk out, she's going, I know what's going to happen. Just wondering why me? Why was I the one that was saved? It just makes me, it makes me feel lucky. And like I have a mission to do in life. Melissa wanted to show me something she couldn't find three months ago while I was here. Something that's going to be important for closure for both of us. This is it. This is the culmination today. Let go of the pen I hold. Let go of everything I... To be able to stand on that sidewalk where that lady said, your baby has 10 fingers and 10 toes. It's hard to put that into words. I'm picturing what went on in that clinic. I'm picturing Melissa and Brian like driving up 
in this parking lot. How are you? Good, how are you? All right. I'm so glad you're here. Glad I'm here. Oh. <sighs> so this is it? That's it. It turns out that the abortion clinic Melissa left 19 years ago has closed, and it's now a county health facility. It actually brought it back like it was happening again, like it was happening all over again. I felt sick and happy at the same time because those few seconds, you would be standing here, and I would have killed you. I would be here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm sorry. I felt like a little empowered to be able to say, no, I don't hate you at all. Like, it's, it's the opposite. And, I, and that really made the world to her, too. I brought some people with me that want to thank you as well. They're pulling up right now in that white car. We had our family members and special people write letters of gratitude to her. They wanted to thank you for your decision 19 years ago. Look back on the pages I didn't really think about it until I was outside that clinic that I had already been there inside Melissa's womb. I'll always be grateful to her for walking out that door and giving me the life that I have today. The storyline saved just in time. Hey, this is not over, it's just you and me. Hey, the action is Dear Melissa, David has been like the older brother I never had. He has been there when I needed advice, and every time I see David, I think of how different my life would have been without him. Sincerely, Bailey. Dear Melissa, without David in my life, I would be a much different person. He has shown me how to stand up for the things that I believe in, and he has encouraged me to break out of my comfort zone. Sincerely, Jason. Dear Miss Melissa, David is a great man. If you are sad, he's the one to cheer you up. Like when we were at one of the family events and all the other kids didn't want to play with me. David did even though he was 10 years older than me. Love, Dylan. Dear Melissa, David is not just a student I once taught. He is now a friend. What you gave to David was life. He now has taken that opportunity and is sharing his gifts with the world. Sincerely, Steve. You are the strongest among people that live 